July 9th, City Council be called to order. Would you please stand for the pledge of allegiance and a moment of silence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mayor, sorry about the uh, change in arrangements tonight, but as probably everybody knows, we'll, we'll make do. it's hot and the air conditioner at the other building is only half working. This is a much cooler option than it is. A little Closer again. Okay. First item on the agenda will be approval of the minutes from the June 25th meeting. Make a motion to approve June 25th. Second. It has been moved and second to approve the minutes from the June 25th meeting. With the clerk, please call roll. Stites? Yes. Adams? Yes. KR? Yes. Lalonde? Yes. Strive? Yes. Second item on the agenda will be statement of the bill play, paid in the amount of two hundred and forty-nine nine zero three eighty-six. Mayor, I make a motion to approve the statement of bills totaling two hundred forty-nine thousand nine hundred three dollars and eighty-six cents. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the statement of the bill paid. Would the clerk please call roll? Stites? Yes. Adams? Yes. Kr? Yes. Malat? Yes. 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 Strike? Yes. Okay, we don't have a microphone, but anyway, are there any requests or comments from the public? State your name and address. You have three minutes. The last time I was in this building, State your name and address. Merle Land, I lived 83 and 11 Garfield Bay in Kansas, Kansas, 6612. Just recall the last time I was in this building with the credit company. Yeah. That's been a few years ago. Mayor McTaggart, uh, council member, staff member, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Merle Land, I live at 83 and 11 Garfield Bay in Kansas, Kansas. I appear today on behalf of Business West, a voluntary organization of about 80 members. Most of small businesses. Property taxes are a very important consideration to all small businesses, and particularly new businesses who might want to move here. Property taxes also are important for residential development. I would ask that the council hold the line when it comes to property taxes in your 2019 budget. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mom. There being none, next item on the agenda will be considered the mayor's appointment of city attorney. Is, and she is here present tonight. Lisa, is it Dehan? Dehan. I knew I was. Very good. Like that. Very good. <laughs> so, um, and I had sent out to the council members uh, her bio. And so at this time, I would consider it a motion to make that approval. Mayor, make a motion that we approve Lisa Dion as the city attorney. Second. It has been moved and second to approve the appointment of Lisa Dion as the city attorney. Would you clerk please call the roll? Stike? Yes. Adams? Yes. K. Mark? Yes. Lalonde? Yes. Schreier? Yes. Okay. Now at this time, Lisa, we're going to do a swear in. Well, swear in, and she may mention. I don't know if you want to make any comments at all, but uh, you can do that before or after. Yeah. Why don't you do it after? Okay. Okay. Just read it out. Okay. I'm Lisa Dima, the software solicitor that I was appointed by the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Kansas. I faithfully discharge the duties of the city attorney for the city of Kansas, so I'll be All right. Thank you. Thank you. Now you can make a statement if you'd like. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very excited um, to learn about a new city and uh, to do whatever I can to help the city move forward in all of the projects that you have going. So I'm very honored to be a partner, and I'll do my best for you. Lisa, I know that they got that. You might just tell for 
the audience a, oh. a little about your okay. history and past, uh, just briefly. Okay, sure. Um, I actually have uh, some Wyandotte County roots. Uh, my first law clerk uh, position at, in law school was with Blake and Ulick. My first job out of law school was with the Wyandotte County DA's office. Um, I then went to the Johnson County DA's office. Um, then worked for the NCAA for about 12 years as an enforcement representative investigating schools. Also worked with student athlete uh, reinstatement, which is eligibility. Um, when they had the audacity to move to Indianapolis, I then uh, started working for the city of Lenexa on a part-time basis. And then I've also uh, been working with uh, Ellis Rainey and the city of Shawnee for the past 10 years. We'll let you sit right here in the hot seat that we reserve at your body. I know we're a little tight in here, so thank you very much. Okay, the next item on the agenda will be consider Mayor's appointment of Edwards Hill Cemetery Board, Mike Wheeler. And you have information in front of you. Mr. Wheeler is here with us tonight. If you haven't had a chance to meet Mr. Wheeler, a longtime resident here in the city. And, uh, as, as you all may recall in the last meeting, uh, he is also working on uh, kind of a new church plant and doing some work in the community there. Also serves on the uh, uh, Audit Fest Committee with us. So great. We thought we would see if he would like to become more engaged in our community. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve your announcement of Mike Wheeler as a cemetery board member. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the appointment of Mike Wheeler to the cemetery board. Will the clerk please call roll? Stites? Yes. Adams? Yes. Kahar? Yes. Mala? Yes. Schreiber? Yes. Mike, thank you very much. We uh, we appreciate volunteers a lot around here, and it's uh, it seems like we're, we were doing really well. For a long time, we had a lot of difficulty getting volunteers. We seem to be getting it to a place where now that we fortunate enough to have people to volunteer yeah. for those positions. Oh, please it. fill the role. I'm glad yeah. it came available. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda will be consider special event retail permit application for Bonner Springs Edwards Hill Area Chamber of Commerce for cereal malt beverages for the Edwards Hill Autumn Fest event September the 22nd. Mr. Mayor, this is essentially a duplicate application for the, the uh, special event retailer permit from last Edwards Hill days. Okay. That was held in April of, of 2017. Uh, what is attached is the map of where the beer garden area would be. It will be exactly the same as, as the Edible Day Festival last year uh, before we made the change back to Autumn Fest. So it's essentially just that the entire parking lot of the community center. Really the only difference between this application and what you've seen in the past for, for uh, Edward Will Day's app applications is the chamber president, Jeff Jones, was actually the uh, uh, official applicant who received the background check and, and, and all that rather than the previous chamber director. Uh, we did the standard check on him and he is good to go as far as the uh, police clearance is concerned. So uh, with that, I, the staff recommendation is to um, approve the serial or uh, a special event retail permit for the Edwardsville Autumn Fest Festival to take place September 22nd, 2018. And to waive the $50 daily, or excuse me, the $25 daily fee. I will point out that uh, our new executive director of the chamber, Ms. Jen Andrews, is here. Uh, in case you have questions of her, uh, I'll turn it over to her. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion we approve <coughs> the. Uh, Application permitting the beer garden for the Autumn Fest. The application fee of $50, but the daily fee waived. Second. I won't repeat that motion, but the motion has been made to approve the permit application for the Springs Edward Hill Chamber of Commerce for the Brazil Autumn Fest event September the 22nd. So the clerk, please call roll. Sites? And, that, and, and, and to waive the daily, yeah. and the daily, the daily fee. Yes. Adams? Yes. Kahar? Yes. Moat? Yes. Schreier? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is conduct a public hearing.
hearing to consider changes in the redevelopment district plan for Village South Edwardsville Redevelopment District. Mayor, I'll give a, a brief introduction and I'm going to turn it over to Tyler Ellsworth, our special counsel. Uh, we are, as published, uh, conducting a public hearing tonight to consider a substantial change in the redevelopment district plan for Village South and Edwardsville Redevelopment District. Uh, after the hearing is closed, we'll be asked to consider ordinance number 997 uh, that officially adopts that. Uh, substantial change and moves this project uh, forward or this change in the TIF plan. The overall district is not changing as far as the size of it, but how it's laid out within the district, basically from two areas to four areas. I think you're familiar with most of the, the overall project itself, uh, but we can certainly answer that. Uh, what I would suggest is ask Tyler to come up uh, to give any further details and then open your public hearing, take any comments, uh, and we can either address those during the public hearing or at the conclusion of the public hearing. And then if there are other discussions that the council wishes to have after the close of the public hearing, we can conduct those. So with that, Tyler, I will turn it over to you. Uh, as you know, we do have uh, John Monson with us, the developer, uh, and Evan Fritz with Post Valley, who is their legal representation. They may be here to answer questions. I do know that we have Greg Kendall in the audience with us tonight as well. So. Good evening, Mayor and Council. As Mike said, Tyler Ellsworth with the law firm of Pecat Rock, the city's special counsel for the uh, South project, in particular the TIF and CID proceedings. Uh, as Mike also indicated, we have uh, on the agenda a public hearing to consider changes to the TIF district plan. Uh, and if the hearing is concluded, then consideration of ordinance modifying the TIF district plan. Uh, and as explained, we're changing from two TIF project areas, all within the district that's currently laid out, and essentially carving out four project areas instead of the original two. And there are two reasons for this. One is the hotel, which as we've been discussing over the last few months, it originally planned as two sort of mid-rise hotels and now a single hotel, and that would be in one of the four new project areas. The hotel, the event center, the hotel restaurant will have their own project area. The other components of what were the original project area were fast food, convenience store, yeah. the retailers, those will be in two separate project areas. And so what that does, sort of segregating things out that way so that the hotel project area, mixing cleaner for the TIF bonds. We can say that the revenue, the TIF revenues generated from this particular project area are securing these bonds. The other revenues for the fast food convenience to retailers, those would be paid and bill rather than bonded at least at this point. So it cleans things up from that perspective. Um, it also allows us sort of a means to offer a fresh 20-year TIF project clock because what we'll do is we will have a project plan approved for everything, all the components that we approved a year and a half from now. And the clock has already started to run when that project plan is approved, which is actually October of 2016. We intend to be back before you uh, as council over the next few weeks to request approval of project plans for these new project areas that we're redefining before set the clock for 20 years. So. And that would include all four project areas, correct? It would be three out of the four. So okay. existing project area one. Which one's excluded? Project area four, which is roughly the southern half, southern third of the site, which we don't have a project plan approved for because it was to be the time of our approval was in 2016. So will there be, there could potentially be another TIF for that area? Yes. That would start a new 20-year clock on that portion only? On that portion, and that would be sometime in the future. It could be next year, it could be, right. you know. But that years. clock hasn't, uh, it, it won't be reset in this, in this next. Correct, because it wasn't started, it won't be reset. Okay. Effectively, what was previously TIF area one, which is where the clock started, is now one, two, and three. Gotcha. Four gotcha. is still four. 
Um, what was the change? One, one was divided into three. Yes. Four was not involved in right. Correct. One. Correct. There's a slight shift there, but it's not gotcha. super significant. So, Mayor, I would say at this point we would uh, go ahead and call the public hearing, open the public hearing, take any uh, testimony, whether it be from the applicant or people in the audience, uh, and then you can close the public hearing and, and then we can move it from there. But we need to open the public hearing. All right. So, at this time, the floor is open for any comments from the public, whether it's the applicant or anyone else. Yeah, we need a motion. Oh, okay. That's right. He made a motion to go in and open that public hearing. I was I was thinking we had to do it earlier, but I remembered we got to do it until now. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion we open a public hearing to consider changes in the redevelopment district plan from the Village South and Edwardsville redevelopment district. Second. And moved and second to open up the public hearing to consider changes to the redevelopment district plan for the Village South and Edwardsville redevelopment district. Please call the roll. Stites? Yes. Abs? Yes. Kahar? Yes. A lot? Yes. Yes. Okay, now you may make comments. <laughs> State your name and address. Uh, Gary Carpenter, 11030 Riverview. I just had a question about the rezoning we did on the, from 2 to 3 and what areas was involved in that. I wasn't clear on that to begin with. And what does that have an effect on what projects can go in on that property then? On which, which locations? Our standard districts or whatever you're calling them. Are you talking about the recent rezoning where we went from C2 to C3? Yeah. 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 Two, so it, it won't have any impact on that. The area that's zoned that became C3, which is the hotel site, hotel convention center site, which includes... So that's three, area one? A. Right. That's area two, basically. Area two. Right. Okay. So it doesn't impact anything with the zoning. And that just cleaned it up to, that we weren't going to be operating on a special use permit. Correct. Correct. Yeah, it made it, it made it a conforming use instead of a... Non-conforming with the special yeah. use, which for a lot of different reasons, that's right. a good thing. Right. Okay, if no one else has any comments, we'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. And moved and second to close the public hearing. Would the clerk please call roll? Stites? Yes. Adams? Yes. KR? Yes. Block? Yes. Shrek? Yes. And then now you're looking for a motion to approve 997 and Sorry. amend, uh, which amends 965 and 973. Correct. That's correct. So we have to wait and see if there's anybody else that needs to talk first. Unless, unless you have to make All right. comments, I'll do it. We're ready for the. Program. Make a motion to adopt uh, city or uh, ordinance 997, which is which changes the redevelopment district plan for Village South and Evansville redevelopment district, and amends ordinances 965 and 973. Second. It has been moved and second to adopt ordinance number 997, approving <coughs> changes to the redevelopment district plan. For the Village South Edwardsville Redevelopment District and amending ordinances number 965 and 973. Would the clerk review that? Well, no, I just have one. Uh, it's actually, uh, I'm going to verify with Tyler whether governing body, there, there's this language, as you know, between governing body, city council on this particular item, whether you would prefer governing body, which would include the mayor in the original vote. Yes. So I will vote on this. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It may be an overkill, but here it's clean. So now we can get it. Would the clerk please call roll? Stipes? Yes. Adams? Yes. Kahar? Yes. Malott? Yes. Shriver? Yes. McCann? Yes. Thank you. Okay. One step closer to the building. Thank you. Big time. <laughs> okay. Uh, Next item on the agenda will be consider ordinance number 998, amending Appendix A, fee schedule of the Code of Ordinances, amending fingerprinting fees for Edwardsville Police Department. I'm going to let Chief Mathis handle this particular item. Uh, staff recommends the adoption of Ordinance uh, right. 998. And then the Ordinance. It's a fire alarm. You got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I got nervous. 
Uh, the adoption of 998, uh, amending the Appendix A fee schedule of the Code of Ordinance, uh, which amends sp specifically the fingerprinting fees for the City of Edwardsville. And you have the background uh, information uh, in, in your packet, which explains, number one, we charge the lowest fee in our entire area. Uh, $5 doesn't cover you know, one minute of the, of the, of the process. We have, currently, we have a very steady stream of folks who come in for fingerprinting uh, just the walk-ins. They're not necessarily from Edwardsville. Nurses, teachers, we're one of the services that, we, we're one of the agencies that provide the service. We were notified by the state that 48,000 new uh, workers in two different occupations, child care and nursing home uh, facilities, anybody employed there will have to be fingerprinted. Our agency is going to be on the list that provides the service, and thus they expect us to be inundated. So uh, us and everyone else who was, uh, offers the service as well. Uh, thus, we did some uh, quick research, uh, surveying the agencies around, and we think the $15 is that, that median that we need to target. Uh, it doesn't necessarily cover all our fees. We, in some cases, they bring the fingerprint cards. In other cases, we have them uh, in stock. So this will at least help alleviate some of the costs of the demand. Again, we, every week we have a steady stream. That doesn't include our folks who are mandated by the court to come in for their fingerprinting after conviction. So uh, again, this will this will put us in some reasonable average uh, for the fee and uh, help cover some of the expenses of uh, increased service provided. So recommend the adoption. Thank you, Chief. My understanding, far, anybody who works in pharmacy now has to do that, uh, and also anybody who sells insurance has to do it. So it's it's going to be a high volume. High volume. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, make a motion we adopt ordinance number 998, adjusting the fees for the fingerprinting. Second. It has been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance number 998, and then the uh, fees for fingerprinting. Would the clerk please call roll? Any question? Oh, excuse me, go ahead. Sorry. Would our, uh, the surrounding agencies that are currently doing this, what are their charges? Clark, do you have the answer for that? Well, I'll let the captain, the captain do the research, so Captain Short has an idea. Um, generally, uh, like the chief said, uh, we are at the lower end of that. Um, I queried Johnson County, Shawnee, Merriam, Kansas City, Kansas, and Bonner Springs. I think the highest was uh, Marion, a 20 or mission $25 for an individual who was not a citizen of their city. They just took anybody. Um, and I think that Bonner Springs, they don't charge at all. Um, that's, that was just a quick conversation I had with their captain. He says that they do have a fee schedule, but his practice is they just don't charge anybody, which that's obviously their practice. Um, so if you have any questions, I can. Best You're going to lose business because they go to Bonner. People, I, 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 from my own personal experience, I do know that there are folks that come from Kansas City, Kansas, or other cities because our volume is lower. They come to us to the, provide that service because it's not as congested as other larger cities. So it's a convenience for them. It's not so much a convenience for us. It's just a service that we provide. Um, and based on the new statutory changes, we're going to see more soldiers do it. So, does that go to a national database? Like, I mean, that's out there. When yeah, yeah, it's papers. It's in the state. Yeah, I mean, we're curious. Do the fees stay here in the city? Yes, ma'am. For no further question, or did the fees? Stack. No. Abs? Yes. KR? Yes. Malak? Yes. Shrek? Yes. All right. Now we're into advisory board. Right? No one is going to go. I may have some other advisory board, so I'll, I'll do my first. Uh, the, uh, if you didn't get a chance to notice today, the trail, uh, new section of the trail has been paved. So the, the final touches will be backfilling along the trail, 
uh, I'm going to say trying to establish some grass. Uh, yeah, if you've been back there, it's very sandy soil, uh, but they did a great job of getting good compaction on that for a trail. Uh, so we should be able to open that up here in the very near future. We've got some signage and other things to finish it up, but that will conclude that project. I think it would be well well received. I, I took a chance a couple of weeks ago, took an opportunity, and walked it before we got everything down and, and had a couple of chances to be there. Part of the reason that our public works director is not here tonight, she was out there at 6.30 this morning in the heat and everything else, uh, plus the office issue, and so she was kind of uh, overloaded or overheated, and so said, uh, go home and get, get some air conditioning. But we're happy to have that. Uh, on new hires, uh, our person, which is our customer service clerk, will be starting around 23rd. Our wastewater foreman position, which will, will help in public work, but primarily focus on wastewater, uh, will start uh, around the end of the month, I believe, on the 30th. Uh, and we have kind of retained a part time person who works for the city of Olathe and operates their right of way mower, is going to come work for us on you know, some hours during the summer times so we can get that out even more. I, I know we. We we'll wrap with it today, but he's an experienced operator, okay. uh, and of course there are plenty of things to go on. But we can focus. his time may be, you know, late afternoon, early evenings, and, and Saturdays, just because he is a full-time employee with another community. But he does uh, have that. We'll put him on as a part-time employee for purposes of insurance and some other things of that nature. So hopefully, we'll, you'll see more activity by that piece of equipment out there. On the road, and as you know, it puts a lot of stuff out. So one of the things is we'll probably have some one of our two guys following along and making sure stuff's not left out in the road. It's my understanding how that's going to operate. Uh, other than that, uh, we are certainly in the, the midst of budget season. Uh, we will our our newly <coughs> appointed city attorney uh, will be working on. Uh, we have a request for a franchise agreement, which one of the things she brings to us is. A lot of knowledge of franchise agreements. Uh, from, uh, basically, it's MCI, Verizon, uh, for putting in some fiber, fiber optic type services in the community. But we haven't had a new franchise per se, a different provider in some time. So that was one of the things we looked at our skill set there. I don't think I have anything else other than that. Other than it's hot, we will be replacing an air conditioning unit on the building over there. Uh, 39 years old, so uh, uh, you know it's not something we necessarily want to do, but we know we'll be in that building for a bit longer. Uh, but uh, so we'll be replacing that. That's about a nine thousand dollar purchase when it's all said and done for one unit. So it's, it wasn't planned, so to speak, from a budget standpoint, but it covered out the building building maintenance operations. But you'll, you'll certainly see that come across on the bills paid here in the, in the next few weeks, hopefully sooner. Yes. <laughs> That's one of those bills I hope we get really soon, but uh, it's probably at least a week out on equipment. So I don't know if you have other things. Uh, I did not. Okay. Chief, okay. I think uh, the only thing I have to report is we uh, broke a record. We're extremely busy. It's, it's been eye-opening. Uh, we do have our department meeting. We have a department meeting usually at the end of June, but scheduling wise, but we'll meet this Friday with our full department in this room. Uh, stand for inspections, we just go through a number of things and what we're trying to accomplish strategic wise and where we're at measuring those sorts of things. So uh, we have this Friday, so everybody here, we have our, uh, uh, we, we have, about every three years, we're going to have to redo our photo in the, in the office because we have personnel changes. So we'll be doing that as well this Friday. So that's, that's our news. Deputy Chief Burr, things good. <laughs> Mr. Now, Mr. Oh, okay. Mr. Burr, you just got back from executive fire officer training, correct? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. It's been two weeks in my room. He's in the three-year EFO program. Four year work. Okay. We're going to have to teach a little more on presentation skills there. <laughs> We're glad he's able to attend that. I think I've probably given you the public works update. Okay, I don't know if there's anything else, any questions. Lisa, do you have any comments at this time? 
Okay. Very good. Uh, I'm going to start with you. Okay. Well, welcome aboard, Lisa. Glad to have you. What event did you uh, run in track in high school? Ah, I ran, uh, I ran the quarter and I had high jump. Oh, no. And it tells you how long ago that was because I called it the quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, thanks to our new volunteer, Mike, for uh, joining the cemetery board. I think anytime someone's volunteering their time for something, it's fantastic. So, appreciate that. Agreed to that. Thank you. Welcome, welcome aboard. And keep us out of trouble. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret? Welcome aboard, Lisa. It's good to have you. Um, and evidently, if there's no reports about 4th of July, everything was. Was it calm here in Evansville? Or is that, <laughs> there's no comment? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, I no assume incident? so there was no, no, uh, incident. no incidents at all. That's amazing. No wow. police incidents? Oh, there was plenty of activity. Um, activity? <laughs> yes. Well, good. I'm glad there was no major incident. We didn't burn anything down, though. Is that right? Nothing. No, 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 no major medicals. Nobody, got, nobody blown off any fingers or anything. Wonderful. No firework stand violations that we investigated. No. The two firework stands, we have two. I, I, you know, we can license up to three by an ordinance. They've been here yeah. for a number of yeah. years. They know the routine. They know what they have to do. The fire department is very good about a pre-inspection and an inspection during, sometime during the event time, just kind of a random event. And, and we really never have problems with people selling them or allowing people to shoot fireworks nearby or, or you know, any of those things. Of course, there's always people who shoot fireworks and people who don't like shooting fireworks, but that, that's you know, well before my time. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. The one the one firework stand that was to the east, um, off K-32 on the north side, at the old lot where that business was, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, um, pardon me. Oh, that where that business was. Well, I'm glad they had it there because that grass was about that high. I don't know who owns that property now. Is it the same owner, or is it just one? It's there? a new uh, person. You're talking about the old auto lot. Boy, right? Correct. Yes. Uh, a person has bought that. Uh, and it looks like somebody cleaned up. And he's, he's in the process. He is. Uh, we've had a number of discussions with his architect that they're talking about because some of the, that old building is in the floodplain parts of it so trying to reoccupy it is going to be a challenge so they've been looking at basically clearing the lot building a new building on there he is in the car sales business uh, but understands that he'll have to make improvements a number of improvements to the building and that occupying it as is really is an option it's exciting to hear you know He's trying to figure out what the cost, you know, how much does it work to do what he wants to do there. But. Sure. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Welcome aboard, Lisa. And um, like uh, Garrett's in here, keeps out of trouble. Um, <laughs> That's hard. Anything on Homestead Motors? I have not heard uh, anything more from Homestead Motors. Uh, the last sales tax, I, I think we told you that, and of course, they closed the end of May, so we would not see until this July report. Right. That would be the right. that would be the next report. I just meant on a new occupant yeah. or anything. I have not. I, I did talk to one uh, individual who has uh, auto sales in in the Missouri side, but he has a Kansas license as well. That was interested in reaching out, so I tried to connect him. Well, maybe if the uh Suggested that to him. Okay. <laughs> so I was thinking maybe you could put that uh, relationship yeah. together and make that work out. But I, I I do know not put I know Greg is here tonight and they they are aware that that facility is available too. Uh, obviously, it's uh, in what wind up EDC. That's uh, uh, you know it's kind of on I wouldn't say on the margin what they do, but I mean they they try to place all types of buildings. But they know it's in, available at this point. It, it, 
the right client comes along. So they very good to help us as well. And then uh, where are we at on trash? Um, I came down, obviously, from Riverview down to the meeting here. Yeah. And both sides of the road are lined with trash. We're, we're mowing over them like we said what was going to happen and turn them out of pieces into thousands. And now we're doing that exactly what we said would happen. And where are we at as far as um, community service? We talked about it multiple times. Right. Who's looking into it? Um, I'd like to have something back that shows um, what what we're doing to see what uh, other cities are doing with their community service people and start to utilize that. It, it honestly it has dropped off the, the radar a little bit, but uh, we will get back on that. So the Devon Ball has sent some updated activity logs as far as what their litter pickup has been, and I can I can forward that to the to the council. He sent that. Yeah, I kind of separate the two. Right, you know, right. uh, the 435 is, you know, its own animal, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm kind of more talking about our residential streets. And, sure, sure. Um, we talk about the gateway into our city. Well, 110th Street is absolutely that, mm -hmm. and we're talking about putting in a uh, multi-million-dollar development and investment in the city for people to come in. 110th Street from KCK. Mm -hmm. I think we should uh, make sure that it looks presentable. I will say we have put together some preliminary plans as to what a kind of a citywide beautification effort would be. Um, a lot of that would be contingent on how we pay for that. And originally, the, the idea was it would come out of the, the solid waste fund. And with the changes to the the fee structure in the solid waste fund, we're just kind of waiting to see where that how healthy that fund balance is. Well, that's why I'd like to entertain ideas that where we don't pay for it. Right. For example, using uh, people that have been issued community service and they have to work off their own. I would just, yeah, I, I would just uh, add uh, relative to the to trash services as a whole, uh, and I know this won't fix all the problems, but we did reach out, I reached out to to K State through their through their MPA program and kind of environmental sciences, there's some funding through KDOT. I mean, it won't necessarily go out and pick up trash, but look at. Uh, so they're looking for ideas and to maybe use us as almost a, a bit of a test on you know where the cause, what causes it, what are, you know what are solutions, what are like kind of as a study area. Now again, that's going to be KDOT right of way, not necessarily local local streets, but uh, we well, are for sure wouldn't want to turn away anybody. Right. To pick up I mean, it, it you know, may generate some new ideas that we hadn't thought about. Right. The, the other thing, I should have mentioned this earlier, is uh, when you said 110th Street, made me think about it. So I, I think I've talked to you in the past about STP, which is Surface Transportation Program, for enhancements to 110th Riverview and the intersection there. Uh, we've been going through the rounds. I. We have a meeting this Thursday, I think, where we'll make some final decisions. Uh, I would say we're on the bubble uh, to basically modify our request to a $3 million request. Uh, we work with the developer of, of the Compass Center. Obviously, it's the same developer, but, but that particular project to assist in some of the cost uh, shared on the road out there. So I think we have a possibly a little bit better than average chance of getting them out into funding. Probably our biggest, uh, I hate to say this, but our biggest challenge is uh, there are projects in there to fund new buses. And there's a number of us that feel that buses is, not that they're bad, but they have a whole separate funding source for air quality mitigation. They have federal funding, they have right fear fees, and there's a number of us on that committee that feel like Surface transportation is about building roads and bridges in capacity, and it's not not that air quality is not an important piece, but that that's not the right funding source for it. And they have about two million dollars worth of requests in there, which 
which quite honestly, if it wasn't in there, we'd probably fund at least another one or two more community projects. Not, it, it helps us a little bit, but really it probably funds down the line. Who uh, can we help uh, on that, for on that level? Um, uh, who can we have uh, well, I, I will, contact that can help us? Well, well, it's a voting committee. I am on the voting committee. Uh, we have our friends at both Bonner Springs and Line, at, at Unified Government uh, that are very supportive of the project and are helping along with that. And at the UG, who is it? Uh, Brent Thompson is the, is the person who's the UG appointee. Uh, Lydia, who is the traffic engineer person, mm -hmm. I think sits on the TAP, what's called TAP, Transportation Alternative Program, which also uh, Tammy from our office serves on that. So and then you're on one of the committees too. In fact, the history. Yeah. yeah. And then Mr. Adams serves as co chair of TTPC. So actually, I had one of the Missouri members of that meeting come up to me after the last one saying, You are right on the bubble. And we'll see if we can't push it over. So, it, and Mike must be. Can you say which way? We <laughs> push it over. <laughs> Good way. Two sides of it. Uh, it's, it's, it, it. Mike must be making a lot of noise because it's, you know, he, and it's very positive. He thought it was a good project. Okay. So cool, but it's, it's pure score. I mean, they're, they're asking, I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to sound like I'm beating up a bus, but they've got $8 million worth of requests in the overall funding program between Missouri and Kansas. And, and, you know, and they said, well, we'll give up a half a million. Well, we had to give up over a million. So in comparison, between what our request is full funding versus what we're likely to get, uh, actually probably 1.5 million almost. And so, you know, my position there is probably not going to be favorable to buses. Not because I hate buses, but again, I think surface transportation is about surface transportation. CMAC, which is congestion mitigation, air quality, is about buying alternative fuel buses and and you know electric buses and things like that and i realize they're expensive you know six eight hundred thousand a unit i understand that but that'll be our position That's now this didn't turn out this wasn't a tri-city application no. is yeah. this just uh, strictly edwardsville strictly edwardsville yes yeah. so now there is some funding in there for signalization at 110th and i-70 uh that may be one thing that gets cut but I will say just in discussions with Brent at the UG, we've said to him, hey, look, if we can keep this in the project and maybe some funding through the UG, I mean, it's it's not a lot of money. Uh, it just keeps it more regional, right? That, they look at these projects, what's the regional impact? I mean, if you're just paving a local street, you know, they're not going to give you anything for it. So how does it affect regionally, which is why we try to tie partners in. but. Basically, each community only gets one project, even though they may submit multiple ones. They ultimately get it down to one. So if we went in with multiple people, and they also, UG obviously has a number of projects, it doesn't always work out. So just want to let you all know that. I mean, I, it's good. I think we're, you know, I, I mean, there's until the final things are done, it's not done. But we're better than I, I really wasn't sure we needed to be above the, the funding line, and right now we're on the funding line, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to stay on top of it and get our project done. Cool. Good work. Okay. Welcome aboard, Lisa.